everyone remembers black and white TVs, like a few of us. I have been using computers since black and white monitors. Monitors, okay. Instead of you buying a very expensive gaming computer and playing games like GTA 5 or other things, you can directly log into a website and play the games with a normal 20,000, 25,000 laptop with a normal Wi-Fi or internet connection. That was the idea. What is the average money that you take home every month just by doing freelance client work? Uh, just by doing freelance client work, I'm making anywhere between how to send connection requests. And after sending connection requests, you should not be too salesy when to pitch, when not to pitch. This is the entire process if you want to get clients to LinkedIn. Now I'm stealing this. <laughs> but I have a better growth hack, which okay. I'll tell you later, okay. where one of my friends went from 7 lakhs to 20 lakhs by using that. Oh, wow. Okay. I would like to hear about that. Cliffhanger. <laughs> we will, uh, we Stay will tuned for that. It. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> hey, this is Deepak here from digitaldeepak.com. And today in this episode, we are going to have a conversation with Leela Shankar, who is a growth hacker and he is also part of Alpha Club. So, hey Leela, welcome to the podcast. Hi Deepak, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. Yes. So Leela, I want to know a little bit about how your career progressed. When did you graduate from college? And since then, um, what is the journey that you have had? Yeah. So, just to give you a context before I talk about my graduation, I'm a techie. Mm. I've been using computers since I was six years old, like oh. which is from 2001. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, my father is a lawyer mm. and one of the first industries to adopt computers is the legal, uh, uh, you know, uh, the legal industry because I, I used to remember in my father's office, we, inst- uh, we used to have four to five typewriters, mm. tuck, 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 typing. Uh-huh. And even one single typo, the entire page has to be, you know, typed again. Uh-huh. Legal, uh, you know, the legal systems, yeah. a ton of paperwork. Mm. So my father had bought in computer to, do, to use the word processing. Uh, That's how I got introduced to computers at, you know, when I was six years old. Uh, so I've been using computers. Everyone remembers black and white TVs, like a few of us. I have been using computers since black and white monitors. Monitors. Okay. <laughs> In 2000, from 2001, when I was six years old. So obviously that made me into a tech guy primarily. I understand how technology works because after computers, we got phones, we got internet properly. Since I have basic set out, now I can understand how other technology things are working and stuff. So that ended up me being an engineer. Got it. <laughs> so I read this engineering called electronics and computer science. Wow. It's a hybrid between electronics and computers. Mm. I did that. And initially I was like, I was very much into robotics. Mm. I, I thought I would do an, uh, I would do MS, I would post MS in the US. And then I joined that. But in second year and third year of my engineering, I, I found out that what you, the marks you make and the knowledge you have are two different things. Uh-huh. And how much money you make and how much marks you have are completely different things. Mm, mm. Then that's how, you know, startup, uh, you know, you can say startup ka kida, you know, that has bitten me uh-huh. <laughs> in my second and third year. And then I was very much into video games, computer video games. I thought of starting a, a video gaming startup a cloud gaming startup because obviously I'm from middle class family I, I couldn't afford high-end gaming pieces and if you want really good graphics and if you want games to be played properly you need very high-end pieces like 60,000, 80,000, 1 lakh rupee pieces but of course I couldn't afford that so my idea was I, I can create a gaming platform for all the middle class people and also for all the people who can't afford mm. that was my idea but Indian market was just maturing at that point of time that's when we have all these Chinese phone makers coming in uh, like Xiaomi, Vivo, Oppo, they're decreasing the price of good phones. All the cheap phones are becoming good. And also we have, thanks to Mukesh Ambani, we have free internet for three months and you know, Geo Revolution happened. That's when PUBG started kicking kicking in, PUBG and YouTube and everything else. And then I passed out in 2017, I graduated in 2017. And I somehow convinced my parents of not sitting for any college placements. I didn't sit for each, uh, even one of the college placements. I just wrote one exam just to feel like how it feels. Uh-huh. Just to get the experience, but I didn't attend the interview. Okay, you were already decided that, hey, this job thing is not for me. Yeah, it's startup, let's do startup. Uh, and then I graduated uh, without, I didn't sit for any placements. And then I realized Indian market is too mature. Uh, it's not mature enough. It'll take at least one or two years to mature. Then on my own uh, discretion, I thought like, okay, I want to do a cloud gaming startup. Uh, but the cloud gaming is like, when I was doing my BTEC or Intermediate, if I want to download a movie or if I want to listen to songs, we used to go to websites and download and then we have to listen. Yeah. We used to listen. But what Lime, happened is... LimeWire and all the other torrent sites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what happened, because of Geo and everything, everything became streaming and stuff. People are getting used to, you know, uh, Wing, Spotify, these kind of things. 
so netflix also big uh, uh, prime video netflix and all these things becoming popular in india so cloud gaming is the same thing when instead of you buying a very expensive gaming computer and playing games like gta 5 or other things you can directly log into a website and play the games with a normal 20000 25000 laptop with a normal wifi or internet connection that was the idea so i uh, with this in mind and with the, uh, and also indian market not being that mature i decided okay i'll join a gaming company i'll work for 2 years and then i'll start my startup and i applied for a company uh, i applied for a company called as gamopedia which is luckily headquarters in hyderabad itself i'm from hyderabad it's a norway company with indian headquarters with a south asian headquarters in hyderabad okay okay i applied it I, 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 and i got selected and i was working for their for one and a half year i worked there for one and a half year and there we used to actually analyze video games at a data level what is the uh, is it a turn based game what is the physics of the game what is the gravity how, how is the gravity acting in the game every each and every as, uh, aspects and we were providing that data to uh, google play store amazon youtube gaming to train their uh, algorithms and their ai on oh, games wow. okay so i handled these three clients specifically over there and i was working on the data and stuff okay. so now i understood video games on the market level and on also on the data front and being a tech guy so it's really interesting i got the analytics and the market side of things and also tech side of things mm, mm. that is the magic right when tech and marketing combine together it is like a super power exactly so that happened uh, and after that one and a half year i just left the company and started my own company called as krypton cloud gaming okay uh, this was in uh, late in 2019 early 2020 i started that company uh, as when well i started that company i somehow pulled in one of my uh, btech uh, friends uh, being a cto is a really good guy uh, i pulled in he pulled in two of his colleagues from that uh, from his company and with three were three of us like four people team and then i literally interviewed i don't 20 to 25 people software people who are like 10 years of experience five years of experience all these people you know to come and you know do the coding and stuff for this kind of software mm. but what i realized quickly is that again the same realization which i had in my btech got stronger now like i'm interviewing a 10 year old person it looks like they have one year experience repeated 10 times yeah <laughs> they only know that one thing and nothing else uh, around it or strategizing nothing else that is the problem with a lot of uh, the market today where you are hiring people they say that they have 10 years of experience but as you said they have one year of experience multiplied by 10 times they were just doing the same thing over and over exactly again. so it's like then the, from that point of time i started applying my you know my growth hacker brain you know my brain it's like okay we need a passionate people and of course i can't give directly money because i can only give st- a stake at that point of time equity in the company then then i got this idea hey man we have github many people have free resources and free code on github so i went to google i just searched github cloud gaming projects i got a lot of cloud gaming projects which other people have done i just went to their profiles contacted them okay i just contacted and now within a week we had three technical advisors one from malaysia one from bengaluru one from usa oh wow fantastic <laughs> so like three technical advisors who are helping us what to do how to code and everything i have my friends and on top of that uh, my startup got incubated into triplet hyderabad okay triplet uh, hyderabad has this cie center for entrepreneurship and innovation it's one of the largest academic incubator in india so my startup got incubated over there and because of that uh, there's a program over there where what i like in triplet hyderabad is that let's say i'm a btech guy in btech they'll give you projects mini project mere project in third year and fourth year but this triplet hyderabad since they have a startup community they will give their students second year third year fourth year students who are into software to startups mm, mm. so startups can get uh, uh, can get these students and make them work for free students will get real time experience fantastic uh. so i also got selected into this uh, this program okay so i got four students from there uh. so i got this four students from there who are working for me three of my uh, and friends this was like did you set up an office outside your home yeah, you yeah. so since i got incubated i got an office space there oh fantastic uh. <laughs> so everything was falling into place at that point of time i had an office uh, and luckily uh, my friends this was which year uh, 2019 late 2019. 2019 okay yeah it's like uh, q3 q4 of 2019 this was happening and then luckily my friends office is also like 5 minutes away from tripleti hyderabad so i used to go to tripleti hyderabad there's an office space over there because i got incubated i used to get my friends the students are anyway residential students so we used to work and we developed the software and stuff 
so that was uh, going pretty well uh, while that was going on uh, i happened to and i also got contacted by head start organization i've been attending various their webinars and other things and they had this thing called as uh, head start kickstart kickstart is a program where you can come and pitch your startup to investors just like shark tank mm, mm. but before shark tank so i, I happened to register over there some thousand to thousand people applied and my pitch deck got approved so they had like three to four screening process i got through all of them and i went and pitched my thing it was completely online at that time it was india's biggest pitching competition and i happened to win it oh like wow okay one of the five it. startups ah, yeah okay. so I, i happened to win the national level pitching competition ah. that got me direct access to indian angel in- investors axel ventures yones ventures all these vcs and stuff okay. So I did you raise money did they give you money so that's what <laughs> the story will be going so i was about to raise money like uh, a couple of of course i spoke with couple of vcs and stuff uh, some of them accepted some of them didn't even understand the market and everything else uh, and what happened was i was about to raise money one of the one of the investors said okay i'll be i'm ready to invest and stuff and by the time by the time this all happened it was 2020 already 2020 first quarter february and stuff covid is <laughs> attacking <laughs> uh so i was supposed to write uh, raise funding and what happened is on that particular day like in this week i'll be getting the due diligence is done with the cap table everything is sorted out and everything else i just have to sign it and what happened was i was about to get an email in 2 3 days and one day modi ji came and said lockdown i still didn't get that email waiting for it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so yeah so full disruption happened in 2024 Yeah, pretty yeah. much everybody in the world. The uh-huh. thing is, again, it's like it's because I won the national pitching competition and all these things are happening. It's it's like within one year of doing my startup, it got incubated. I got I won this pitching competition. I'm I'm raising funding and stuff. Uh, Head Start organization recognized my startup as one of the top hundred startups in India. But of course, it's very really star- uh, top hundred startups in India right now, right? So that's the thing. After that happened, I didn't get funding and stuff. And the problem happened is. at that point of time we have to build around data center uh, aws uh, google gcp just entered in india at that point of time google cloud uh, azure no one no, any of this founder uh, any of this uh, data centers they didn't have 3d modeling gpus they have machine learning gpus okay so it uh, azure had only one set of data one set of nvidia graphic cards where we can use that but it's very very expensive it doesn't make any sense to use that so we had to make our own data center that's why it became capital intensive okay. the software matlab we can make the software anyway yeah. but the hardware that's where i needed funding and obviously i didn't get funding because of covid and other 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 reasons and then that's how it, it kind of ended so since then you have been getting into more into freelancing slash services slash agency mode and like basically working with clients you also worked somewhere as a full time employee for a while uh yeah so what happened is after that happened and then i didn't know what to do but i know how i i know the tech side i know the marketing side because i'm been the founder right so i started helping my other fe- fellow founders and fellow you know fellow friends who have their own startups and stuff so though the problem wa- which i observed very early is that because i'm a tech guy and also marketing guy i never observed it when i was running my own startup when i'm analyzing other people's startups when i'm trying to solve their problems the tech ga- the tech side and the marketing side are completely silos the marketing guy doesn't understand the tech the tech guy doesn't understand marketing that's where i'm complimenting now i know what tech to use for what marketing things and what to do in you know what kind of marketing we have to do for this kind of tech or what kind of tech is enables us which kind of marketing for people that's where i plugged in so i started calling myself a technical marketer i didn't know something like growth hacking existed ba- back then i did that for one uh, like couple of months and then i thought let's monetize it and i was searching for a term what will you call technical marketer is not the word i'm looking at and then i came across okay something called as growth hacking growth marketer sean ellis these people look, okay i'm a growth hacker now i think i've been doing this without actually knowing the name okay now i became a growth hacker now i i will fully dwell into how to do this stuff and everything okay so now you are like having clients directly and helping them with growth hacking yeah so helping them with right now. growth hacking directly okay so just for inspiration for the audience watching this What is the average money that you take home every month just by doing freelance client work? Uh just by doing freelance client work I'm making anyway between uh 8 to 9 lakhs. 8 to 9 lakhs a month. <laughs> Great man. Awesome. That's a, that's that's a very good number. And the best part is that it's not like there are a lot of overheads in this like you know you are still like a freelance 
remote digital freelancer as i would put it and uh, how many clients do you have how how many hours do you spend with every client every week yeah i'm right now handling around 6 to 7 clients and i spend around every day i'll spend around 4 to 5 hours working not more than that oh fantastic so <laughs> a freedom lifestyle ho gaya this is true freedom lifestyle <laughs> uh, kind of now yeah. now i'm doing other stuff apart from just agency yeah so other things take my time but uh, i just created all the systems so that I, you know i mean that is because you choose to work on it not necessarily that you have to work on it to bring in the income right so obviously we'll keep busy with multiple other projects but uh, i keep telling this that digital freelancing which is freelancing remotely right through the digital medium is one of the biggest opportunities in india right now uh, first of all because uh, if you are trying to become a coach or a mentor your sales are only going to come within india and there is a reason for that because uh, we have to call a spade a spade yes we have a great business relationship with the us but the us still considers india as a third world country yes and if you want to learn something from somebody you have to look up to them and us people generally outsource services to india get it done with they love our quality of products and everything but in terms of the teaching market or in terms of the let's say mentoring market uh, it might be still like around 1% or maximum 2% but when i see coaches selling courses training mentorship it's 99% within the country indians will learn from us guys but us guys won't learn from india but when it comes to freelancing the advantage is that you can get clients internationally and you can earn in dollars you don't need to charge gst because gst is a consumption tax so people from us somebody is paying you 1000 dollars you don't need to charge them 180 dollars extra in taxes and that comes to you as an income directly and dollar rate is increasing because of the purchasing power parity and the cost of living uh, being low in india people who earn in dollars even if they earn 2000 dollars a month as a freelancer right that's like 1.6 lakhs now and and it's much more difficult to earn 1.6 lakhs here uh, by having indian clients and indian customers or having a job in india what do you think like by the way what is your split of international customers and indian customers my split is uh, 60 40 60 us 40 indian yeah still it's more than 50% right which is what brings you like a good chunk of revenue uh, with a very good conversion rate and uh, most importantly i also feel that when freelancers are exporting services and small agencies are exporting services you are also adding to the foreign currency reserve of the country itself mm-hmm. if you consider india as a single company it makes money when it exports and spends money when it imports and considering that we import a lot especially oil and stuff like that electronics car, raw materials India needs a lot of foreign currency reserve like for if you earn $1000 you don't get $1000 directly you get $1000 ka equivalent which will be 82000 rupees today so who keeps that $1000 RBI keeps or the central bank keeps the $1000 which adds to the foreign currency reserve of the country itself and today we have a large amount of foreign currency reserves coming from IT exports which is from all the IT companies we have a lot of money coming into India through remittances so people go to us work there nris they send money back home and that sending money back home itself is 100 billion dollars a year which wow. is a lot yeah yeah and i feel the next wave of incoming foreign currency reserve will come from freelancers because you have great internet here you have great education you have a lot of talent here cost of living is low so india can become the outsourcing destination for the world again yes it was already but now it can go for another round of it but not through employment in hcl infosys tcs wipro or any it companies like that but as individuals because internet has enabled us to build our own brand and reach out to potential clients ourselves and these companies are serving big enterprises and sometimes governments as well but what about small businesses msmes that is across the world mostly in us and indian marketers freelancers app developers website designers can service for the world yes there are some very i would say grunt work or mechanical turk work which is taken up by a lot of southeast asian countries like we do have philippines vietnam all competing for this but still when it comes to a little bit of a higher level strategy and high quality work not just execution but also strategy wise i think indian freelancers are like superbly positioned to export services from india 
Exactly. And that is the ecosystem which I am also trying to grow and I have also benefited from this ecosystem. So, so yeah, man, I think uh, that's very inspiring. So tell, tell me a little bit about what is the exact kind of work that you do? Uh, we have a lot of mind maps opened up here. Uh, you are a very systematic and process oriented guy. Uh, so tell, tell us a little bit about some of the golden nuggets which, which you have. So let's expose it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. So before that, I would love to tell what exactly is growth, growth hacking for people, right? So I would define growth hacking as marketing on steroids with the help of technology and user psychology okay not just technology but also user psychology which is very important which is very important for conversion and stuff right uh, and also my primary pitch to anyone is i can help companies grow without running any ads or seo oh wow i want to hire you first <laughs> <laughs> so without you, do, you don't have to depend on any ads or any seo completely based on growth hacks and how you know growth hacks you can actually grow your company. Like, I scale up this agency, I'm getting my clients, right? Normally, how, what people would think, if I need to get a client, either I have to do outreach, which is uh, outreach which is cold emailing or LinkedIn messaging, or else uh, you have to do ads, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google, SEM ads, whatever it is. But I never got clients from these two things. What I did was simple. As you said, many if you want to sell something, the first thing is that inbound has more power than outbound. If you are coming to me, I have more power yeah. while if I am reaching out to you. Because if you are reaching out to me, there is an intention, there is a need for you. But you won't reach out to me if you, do, uh, if you don't know who, who I am, if I don't build authority enough. So for that, what I did was, the moment I got a couple of clients, I just searched communities, I just went to Facebook groups, growth hacking or marketing, email marketing, whatever groups it is. I just joined growth hacking subreddits, WhatsApp groups and everything else. And whoever will ask the question, I'll try to answer the best possible way. Like let's say I have a Facebook group. I just logged in Facebook, someone asked a question about marketing or some let's say email marketing. That post can have 50 comments already. I don't care. I'll comment, I'll give the most actionable and the most detailed answer that I can. Got it. Uh, so th thereby you are building your authority there. Authority over there. So eventually, if you do like, if you just answer five questions every day in a month, you will get at least 15 to 20 DMs. Hey man, I saw you doing that. Can you help me more? Mm, mm. If they can afford, then they'll be your clients. If they can't afford, it'll be goodwill. I'll, I'll just help them out with a free uh, call. And it's like, hey man, if you really found this interest, uh, if you really found this valuable, uh, would you be willing to give me a testimonial or just endorse me on LinkedIn? Something like that. And if he can afford, he becomes my client. Yes. That's a great way to acquire clients. So where do you go and look at these comments? Mostly on LinkedIn or? Uh, Facebook groups are really great. Okay. And uh, subreddits are really great. Uh, and Reddit is a really big place. And Reddit is so niche that what, uh, you can find a subreddit for everything. And people are really hardcore over there. Mm, mm. So I got clients from, I got, I closed clients on DMs of Reddit, of, of, <laughs> of Facebook, of WhatsApp also. So you are building authority through content marketing, but not content marketing like a traditional influencer, but content marketing in a very context based specific way, which I would say is more like account based marketing, that you are only marketing to the accounts that you are trying to close, not to everybody. Yeah, yeah. in traditional content marketing, I have to do an SEO, I have to do research, I have to do articles and pray someone will read it and get impressed and contact me. And you are, it's like you are throwing a wide net into the ocean and expecting that some big fish will come in the net. But with this approach, you are directly identifying the big fishes and getting them with a fishing rod. Right? Uh, I'm not even kidding. Uh, there's this guy called Rohan Chobe. He's one of the most famous growth hackers from India. Uh, he is the moderator of r slash growth hacking. And they also happen to have a uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. I just joined the WhatsApp group. And within one and a half month, I just I was the uh, uh, I was the first one answering all the questions and also in the more detailed and actionable step. Because of that, he recognized me. And he approached me and when I approached him also, the thing is that now we are working together. Okay. That's the thing. Like I directly started working with the one of the biggest growth hackers just by joining his community and being active and answering all those questions for a month. Got it. So that's how you build your authority. 
and uh, then you start DMing them, then you tell them that, hey, I can help this with you. So do you take like upfront payment? Do you build like a proposal? Do you get on a one-on-one -on -one call with them? How does the client conversion process work? Yeah, so since all these are inbound clients, they are uh, they are anyway read my message or they saw my video somewhere or they did something. I have the authority right now. Once they come, I take 50% advance. Okay. And then... Uh, and they, if it is a US client, they pay via PayPal? Uh, for US clients, a lot of people say uh, pay, pay through PayPal, but it takes a lot of, uh, you know, commission. commission. So we can use TransferWise. Uh. Yeah, wise, wise.com. Wise ah, wise.com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wise.com. I'll, I'll be using to take US payments. I'll take fifty percent advance, and I'll tell, I'll, I'll show them my mind maps. So and it will be directly deposited into your bank account in India. Yeah, directly deposited. Nice. That too within like couple of hours. Okay, interesting. Hmm, amazing. So, um, so that is the process through which you you take fifty percent advance, and then how long does it take to deliver the project? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll let them. Uh, the thing is. I made all the mind maps and everything. I'll just show them. See, this is how the process is. The thing is, most freelancers, what they think is that if, if we tell everything right now, client will take it and run away and implement it himself. If he'll do, it's his wish. He can't get the results. It's not only the process, it's the implementation it's that we do. Execution also. Execution that we do. So I'll just show them. Uh, first of all, uh, being an agency, I never did a PPT for either reports or proposal. Oh. I hate PPTs, man. The, the last PPT I did was my pitch deck for my startup. Right, it's just a waste of time for me. I just have Google Sheets and I have mind maps and I just show them this is how it works. If you want to see previous client results, I'll just directly share my screen, show them a mind map, directly log into the tool of my client, I'll show the client results and then I'll just tell them, see this is how it is. If you, and uh, that's how I'll just roll. I don't have screenshots or PPTs or something like that. I think mind maps are very efficient. So can you walk us through some of the mind maps that we have here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I have too many of them. We have to select uh, which one we need. So what is this about LinkedIn outbound strategy? This is how to basically use LinkedIn to get clients, is it? Yeah, okay. yeah. it's basically how to build your authority and how to do your outbound, outbound using LinkedIn. You know, most of them is pretty basic, you know, good banner image and everything else, targeting active, targeting active users and stuff. And then how to send connection requests. And after sending connection requests, you should not be too salesy when to pitch, when not to pitch. This is the entire process if you want to get clients through LinkedIn. I'm stealing this. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, something else that you... Uh, and yeah, uh, a lot of people struggle with lead generation. And we have a lot of tools like, you know, Crunchbase. We have other tools. Let's say one of my client wanted, uh, is using Crunchbase. I think it's some, some thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars a year or something. Okay. And he was he's getting data from here and just cold emailing. Okay. And I just told to I just saw his thing when I just onboarded as a uh, consultant for him. I was like, bro, why are you paying so much for Crunchbase? You can get all Crunchbase URLs on for free on Google. Okay. He was like, how can that be possible? Okay. The growth hack over here is that Google is the biggest data scraping company in the world. Yeah, Google itself is scraping data from all the websites. Yeah. So the thing is, you can actually go to Google and there's something called as Google Dorking or Advanced Google Search. There's a particular syntax. If I follow that syntax, I can get all the, let's say I'm, I'm looking for SaaS companies in California with Series A, Series B funding from Crunchbase. I don't have to go to Crunchbase. I can just input all those things in a particular syntax and uh, do a Google search and Google will give me all those emails at a time. Right? Got it. So I have a sheet for it. Crypto, CPT. Wait, I have, I have a master sheet. Oh, not this one. I think this one. Yeah. So this is the document. Uh, so I'll be giving a lot of, uh, I'm used to giving a lot of workshops for a lot of, you know, communities and stuff. So this is the document I, ma I made for one of the lead gen workshops that I did. So here are multiple ways to do lead generation, especially if you're a freelancer, right? First of all, it's common sense, <laughs> which I call a common sense Google sheet and stuff, and Google search, Google maps, and all the other things. Uh, if I come to this common sense, right? If I would just open the sheet, it's pretty simple. If you go to LinkedIn, you can search anyone. You can find their first name, last name, and company name. Once that is there, I'm uh, my... <laughs> My website is leelashankar.com. My name is Leela Shankar. What are the uh, you know, permutations and combinations of having my email? I made eight Leela different formulas. Leela.shankar.com. Leela.shankar at leelashankar.com. Makes sense. Right. So once I have all these things, right? Then what I did was this series of eight formulas. When these eight formulas are done, we can just copy paste all these uh, 
content without formulas select them and make them you know convert to people chips i mean select all of them at once and right click on them and how to do right click man yeah <laughs> so you can select all these things convert you know go here smart chips and you can say convert to people chips and once i have that once the email is really a valid email you will got this people chips once you do for enough number of but things but is this email only for google workspace emails no no it also works for outlook outlook also Zoho emails. google can find out that it's a real email id crazy okay right so you can just go to linkedin you can find your target audience so can we try like let's say pixel track yeah so i would put pixel track here and first name deepak kanakaraju okay so deepak at pixel track is my email id then we have deepak.kanakaraju at pixel track.com all this so i have to copy paste it here yeah Okay, I will copy this and just paste with the formulas. Set it here. Only paste values Smart only. Chips. Okay. Wait. Edit. Paste special values only. Yeah. Now we can convert to people chip. So yeah, only the packet pixel track dot com is valid. So that has got converted into a people chip. Crazy. i will steal this sheet also <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you, you can find the company name and the person name either on linkedin either on clutch on or either on google search or either on the web, you know website of the company something like that so n number of ways you can get the data and get the email directly and start emailing them this is number one the other way is the crunch based thing right coming back to the crunch based thing if i open the sheet mm. i made it into a formula sheet okay you can just input This is the crunch page. You can just copy paste it. You want you can input your industry, input your location and round, and just say this contact email. It it will make this formula. You can just copy this formula, and if you go to Google, and paste this formula and search. Right, these are all crunch page companies, which are SaaS companies from Boston, with contact email. If I do, if I just search contact us, right? See, so you can get all those emails. Crazy. and now we don't have to even copy from here we have uh, web scraping tools like data miner web scraper dot this is not just for freelancing but if somebody wants to have a job also they can directly outreach to these companies instead of fighting yeah, yeah. with all the application network job sites where there is such so much crowd and nobody really pays attention to your resume or your application but you can reach out to a ceo directly like for example let's say somebody wants an seo job he did an audit of a company says that these are all the seo errors on your website and puts like a pdf sends it to the ceo directly the ceo will send it to the hr and like i want this guy yeah yeah but i have a better growth hack which i'll tell you later where one of my friend went from 7 lakhs to 20 lakhs by using that oh wow okay i would like to hear about that cliffhanger <laughs> we will <laughs> stay tuned for that stay tuned for that so here you don't have to again copy paste we have you know uh, many scrapers like data miner web scraper.io or phantom buster text say you where you can just copy paste this url and they will uh, they will directly scrape the email ids and other things as well you, you can just go on uh, youtube it and you will get it right so you don't need to pay 100 uh, 1000 dollars 2000 dollars for crunch base because every crunch base company profile they are available on yeah every profile is already scraped by google itself the same thing if you want to find any influencers if you want to find any influencers also we have one for youtube we have one for twitter if you to if i want to find someone's email id like fitness youtube channels with how these many subscribers i can directly get their email id directly on google search the same thing can be happen if you want plumbers who are on instagram from new york okay. we can do that okay. you don't have to go to instagram and search so this can be done for searching influencers this can be searching for other agencies okay. the possibilities are so many uh, uh, uh. can this be shared with our audience yes yes you can completely share that bookmark this for now and put it on the youtube description for people to use this we'll just create a copy of it completely and again there are other tools we google map extractor you can directly extract all the businesses local businesses from google maps and then if you're providing you know gmb services local seo services you can directly approach them you are born so intelligent like this or you developed the intelligence over time <laughs> 
I'm like I, I told I've been using computers since six years old, so I know how every tech works. Yeah. If I know how something works, it's way way easier to you know yeah. take advantage of the process. A lot of people have process. a little bit of anxiety to tinker around with tools like this, and uh, they don't like touch it at all. They are like too superficial, like you know. But I think you would also have been a person where you had some gadget and you had to open that gadget and see how it works inside. <laughs> exactly. My my parents used to complain that when I was a child. Whatever toys they bought for you, you I'll, I you used to break it. it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I can understand where that natural inclination comes from. It's just that you want to like you know kind of break things apart and understand how it works and growth hack your way through it. Uh, and there are other other things. These are you know they can go through these things. We can again uh, scrape Facebook group members. We can directly do DMs to them and everything else. Once they go here, they can actually go ahead and find how exactly we have to do and everything else. See, uh, getting data of people who might want to work with you and possible clients is one thing, but what message do you send them, and how do you get their attention? Hmm. Uh, how do you like try to make it unique and in such a way that it shows authority while you are outreaching to them? Obviously, one example that you told is to engage people in groups and then message them directly. But if somebody is messaging somebody directly, how would you craft that email? So let's say I'm doing cold emails. Uh, so I have done cold emailings for a lot of my clients. I have done it for myself as well. Uh, so what happened in that cold email is that first of all, it's cold. So the other person doesn't know who the hell you are. <laughs> so there's no relevancy. Yeah. The first step is to establish a relevancy. Other you are in same group, same college, same city, same country, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Some level of common ground is common ground yeah. is really important. And then uh, I have three levels of relevancy. Number one, the common ground. Hey, we are in same Facebook group or we are from the same. industry and then second one is specific to his company third one is specific to him mm. got it you can uh, out of these three things you have to at least hit two relevancy points for you to get better open uh, better reply rates the three ones that you said is specific to him specific to his company yeah like uh, in a uh, specific to his group same linkedin group or same city same location and then specific to his company, company specific to him, to him. Ah, got it. we can hit any two of these things yeah. to get relevancy ah. like let's say uh, i scrape email ids or i get email ids from linkedin and i'll say uh, my go to line is that hey man i was browsing through let's say i'm, I'm approaching you i was browsing through digital marketers in india and i found your profile really interesting or your profile caught my eye that's the first point of relevancy you're a digital marketer you're in india it's a broad relevancy and then i'll come to your thing uh, i uh, i saw that you're working as a ceo and founder of pixel track Uh, that's really impressive. I saw your portfolio includes so many big companies. That's second relevant point. Now it's like, uh, by the way, I'm Lila Shankar. I help companies grow without actually running any ads or spending anything on SEO. Completely using growth hacks. So this is what I've done for my previous clients. Would you be interested? Simple. No link, nothing. If they say they're interested, then the conversation happens. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. Amazing, man. So, uh, what other things that we can explore uh, in terms of growth hacking and yeah in terms of the jobs share. when i told that ah, i'll tell yeah, that right yeah we'll talk about that so <laughs> the thing is that uh, i myself uh, i headed the growth and marketing in a couple of startups uh, and then what i observed over there is that all these big companies where i'm talking with my other friends who are into big companies conglomerates and mnc's once they have a requirement first they do three steps Number one, internal hiring. They'll promote their existing staff to a higher position. Mm. Or else, if they don't have their internal hiring is done, or if they don't, if they can't do internal hiring, then they do referrals. The last, their employees refer your friends. And if if their friends get get the job, this guy will get a referral bonus. Who's the employee will get the referral bonus. The third one is coming out and keeping on job boards. So if you are applying for jobs in job boards like Nokri or LinkedIn jobs, you're already too late. Mm. I know. right because generally if i want to hire someone first i would reach out to people that i already know then i would ask for referrals when everything fails then i'll probably list it in a job site and ask people to apply on the job exactly site. so this is pretty basic like we have to first ask for referrals and then apply for job portals but who told you to only ask your your own friends why don't you ask strangers for referrals uh-huh. okay. i told my friend bro go is uh, a data scientist uh, so is like go to linkedin make the top list of top 100 uh, companies list of where you want to work as like swiggy zomato flipkart uber whatever it is to all the other companies search all the companies where their data science requirement is really good make a list of 50 to 100 companies 
then every day go to that company and go to the data scientist at swiggy you'll you'll get like five to ten people because there's a team of data scientists at swiggy swiggy right and then go and send them connection request i'm a data science student i'm actually looking for jobs would you mind uh, sending my referral i'll share my csv because in connection request we can send a connection note which is up to 300 characters yeah daily was doing it uh, for 15 people okay we have a connection limit of 100 per week in linkedin that's why i told him only 15 per day five days a week or else i would have told him 200 uh-huh. so daily he was sending one day swiggy ho gaya next day zebdo next day uber like that all the top startups he started okay and he was so confident uh, so he was so confident after one month he got like four to five uh, interviews he just left his job he has three months of notice period after leaving his job again he started the process uh-huh. He left his job, three months of notice period, okay. daily he's sending 15 connection requests like this. Uh-huh. People are accepting, he's sharing his CV uh-huh. and he's getting interviews. So he was doing at 7 lakhs. He got an interview, he's like, I'm already doing 7 lakhs. They said, okay, we'll do 9 lakhs. Now we got another interview. Because the uh, notice period is three months, people are waiting for three months, right? They'll be waiting. So within this gap, he got another job opportunity. He got selected. He said, I have 9 lakh offer. Uh-huh. Now we got 11 lakh. Uh-huh. Nice. After, after that, he got another, uh-huh. another interview. Uh-huh. So it, it, it just bargaining, 9 to 11, 11 to 15, 15 to 18, 18 to 20. Nice, nice. So within three months after leaving his job in notice period, he did this thing and he jumped from 7 lakhs to 20 lakh pack. If you are ever a hustler or a freelancer or a growth hacker, then you can any time at any economic situation during even a recession period, always learn how to find a job. Exactly. <laughs> Because you have to market yourself. If you don't market and like, you know, advertise yourself, then how are you going to get a job? Exactly. I mean, uh, this is a similar thing which I, uh, which I did in my startup as well. Like, of course, I was getting connected to investors because of Head Start thing. Before that one also, what I used to do is that uh, in Tripoli, Hyderabad, Head Start used to do this thing called Startup Saturday. Okay. So every Saturday, uh, any entrepreneur, any big entrepreneur, investor used to come and, you know, have a one or two hour session with entrepreneurs. I used to go to Triple D Hyderabad. It's like one and a half hour from my home. But every week I used to go there. I used to sit and I, I made friends with all those people. I used to go half an hour before. I used to talk with the speaker, whether it's a big investor or an entrepreneur. I used to be in the first row. I used to make sure I listened to his entire speech attentively. Again, I used to ask a few questions to him. Come back to home, send him a connection request with a note. It's really awesome that I attended your session. It's very insightful and everything else. I did that for like six months while I was there in my job also. Six months to around one year. So by the end of one year in my LinkedIn, I had around 500 to 600 investors and entrepreneurs. And every week I used to have an update. Hey, today we did this one in my startup. Uh Today we hired this one as a technical advisor. This is the progress of my startup. The thing is, all these uh, VCs, all these angel investors will get hundreds of pitch decks on their emails every day. And if you see them in any startup incubator or something, they'll be like, they'll be like celebrities, you know, and all star phones are behind them. Sir, 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 you know, my pitch deck, my idea. I don't, I just wanted to stand out. So how can I be in front of them by not actually going after them? So I added all those people on their LinkedIn. And generally also, if you send a LinkedIn connection request as a founder to an investor, he won't accept because you know, you'll go and pitch. But since I'm attending his own session, he'll be accepting because there's relevancy. So I, I built out this network and I started posting all these things. And then they had started approaching me. Hey, your startup looks interesting. Can we talk? Mm, interesting. Awesome. That looks like a good way to, you know, uh, go forward. So anything else you want to share in this podcast? How has been the experience with Alpha Club, the events and associating with us? Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Alpha Club really helped me a lot, like it, especially setting up the systems and everything else. Because one thing is getting clients. Other thing is how to deliver, yeah. how to make systems and how to be more efficient. That's where Alpha, uh, Alpha Club came in with your guys of experience. You gave all the systems, what to do, how to do. And you, are, you guys are also helping in hiring. <laughs> so I don't have to go out and, you know, hire a few guys and interview it myself and everything else. We have a very good pool of DDIP students and other, uh, other things. I can directly hire from there. You have all the systems. So there's no headache for me. I can just scale, focus on scaling up my thing. Fantastic. Awesome, man. So thanks a lot for doing this podcast. I think we discussed a lot of interesting things. Uh, At some point, I might want to do a growth hacking mastery course with you where you become the mentor and we end up creating some five to 10 lessons for the mastery club. Uh, That is something that I would be looking forward uh, in terms of associating with you in the near future. Thank you so much, Deepak. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Bye.